Embers rise, stark against the night. The tyrant Dong Zhuo wields the flames of destruction. Luo Yang burns. Chaos ignites as the power of the Unix is crushed. In the pyre, the hand falters. Yet there are those who would still fight, still roar. Gon Xuan Zan holds against the tyrant, his own fire unrelenting. With a thundering of hooves, he rides to war. The Empire, long divided, must unite. Long united, must divide. Thus has it ever been. Welcome, my friends, to Total War Three Kingdoms. And what better way to get things kicked off than with a Gongswin Zan campaign? Some White Horse General action coming your way. We've got one hour to work with. Let's make it count. And of course, we'll be joined by one of the most legendary, one of the most iconic characters in all of the Three Kingdoms period, Zhao Yun. So, a couple things make Gongswin Zan's campaign pretty unique. He's got a unique building chain that gives him public order and income from all sources. He has two unique units, the White Horse Fellows and the White Horse Raiders, which are light cav with very long range, good missile attack, good mobility that can get him behind, destroy archers, that kind of thing, and even get stuck into melee with some of the heavier stuff if you hammer an anvil. And then he's got a very balanced military kind of campaign. We're stuck all the way in the northeastern part of China. We've been holding back the barbarian hordes for years now, but finally, it's time to make our ascension towards the status of emperor and take over all of China. We're going to see how we can do that. So let's take a look at our starting position here, and then I can give you a little update on where we are, because this is not actually the start of the campaign. We're actually about 10 or 12 turns in. I wanted to skip some of the boring housekeeping stuff right at the start of the campaign. Some pretty easy battles there. I wouldn't worry too much about it. And I don't think Gongsun Zan's campaign is actually one of the hardest in the game. He's got a pretty great star position because we are nestled right in the northeastern part of China with mountains to our north. I don't think we have any actual barbarian hordes to worry about too early on. I'm not sure if that's even a mechanic that comes in. But what we have done is consolidated our starting position. And we only have to worry right now about one of Gongsun Zan's biggest rivals, Liu Yu, who actually happened to be his mentor before we made it into this campaign, and he has, well, we had a little falling out, I guess you could say, and now we're about to get stuck in and try to destroy his armies. He's got a bunch of towns right on our borders. In fact, he even has an army right there waiting for us, and I don't really want to let him conquer my iron mines and destroy my economy, and so I think we're going to sally out and fight. We are on extreme unit sizes, so I'll be showing that off. Sorry, something howled its displeasure in the jungles outside my house. If I disappear, and this is the last video I ever post, know that I fought bravely against the creatures of the night. <laughs> but we've got an army to fight, and we're on extreme unit sizes. I am very curious to see how it runs, and I'm sure you guys are as well. And if you're curious about my computer setup, it is on the about page of my channel, and we'll see how this goes. There are going to be a lot of troops. He does not have a full stack, but he has a large one. I'd say there's going to be roughly about 6,000 troops in this battle. At least 4,000. So we'll see. We're going to sally out and hopefully catch him off guard here. Hopefully he takes it and does not retreat. Otherwise, we might have to push deeper into the, to his territory. But at the moment, our supply lines are looking good. We have replenished at Yu Bei Ping. And we are going to be butchering plenty of settlement names during the course of this playthrough. Let's we'll see how many we can do. And if you're wondering, I am not going to be playing on the Chinese version. I think that the Chinese voice acting is actually better in a lot of ways. But the problem is, if you're on mobile, or if you're on a laptop, or anything that's a smaller device, you will not be able to see the subtitles, because they'll just be too small. And then you're not going to have any idea what's actually being said between the characters, or by the announcer. So, I think that kind of defeats the purpose. We're going to stick with the English voice acting for now. Take them. And he retreats. Okay. Well, we're pushing him into the choke point. His back's to the mountain. If he retreats any further, he might just die. So we're not going to be able to catch him on this turn, which is unfortunate. While we wait, let's take a look at the Reforms Tree, which is one of the biggest changes in Total War Three Kingdoms campaign. Works very differently than we've ever seen a tech tree work, and I must say it's also one of the most beautiful I have ever seen. Just take a look. Soak it all in. The aesthetics. 
truly gorgeous. At the moment, we're working down the middle part of the tech tree. We've gone through currency-based economy to get more income from commerce, gotten some more economy-based buildings that will give us 200, 300, even 500 gold a turn. So once we've leveled up our cities, we'll be able to build some of those. And then we worked on shaft mining which gives us, I believe, some of them are actually 500, 600 gold a turn, gives us access to some of the ore mining camps that are real, real nice. So I wanted to build up my economy. I think the military aspect of it isn't going to matter too much super early on because one of the things is we can only play up till turn 50. So if I can build that economy up, I'll be able to build troops anyway, and we should have a good time that way. So I want to make sure that I built that strong bread basket both from an agriculture perspective, which it seems like our area of the map has decent agriculture, maybe not the best, but doesn't seem that sparse, and also worry about building up our economy to the point where we can actually field lots and lots of troops. So we'll see how that works out. This is actually the first time I've ever played the campaign by myself. I did do the Liu Bei campaign like everybody else, but content creators in those events, very limited amount of time. I've got more time to work with here, so we should be able to do more. What we're going to do right now is end turn and see what Liu Yu does. I want to catch him out and make sure we can kill him. We'll be worried about some of the economy stuff. Probably next turn, build up some stuff. But yeah, he's actually going to back up all the way. Maybe go garrison Yu Zhu, which I didn't want to see, but looks like he's going to kind of pussy out a bit. Whatever. We can go after him. And what we're going to do at the moment is push further. There he is. Okay. Don't you run from me. All right. So we've got, he's got 3,100 troops, very large contingent, but he does not have any cavalry. And actually, these guys are going to be ripe targets for our White Horse Fellows and our G Cavalry, which we do have two of. So let's take a look at our army. We have the White Horse Fellows. By the way, you're going to notice as soon as we get into the battle, archer range is longer than it has ever been. It is actually absurd. It feels like they can fire almost halfway across the map. I don't know if that's true only in romance mode. I'd venture to guess that it's not. I bet it's true for both. But man, they can fire super, super far. We've got four archers. Archer militia under Zhao Yun's command. Some axe band. Pretty low tier infantry. Do have two saber militia. Two lance cavalry. They're rocking G's. And it's like a halberd. And then we've got G infantry and the white horse fellows. So we'll probably have Zhao Yun try to catch him out in a duel. Although it'll probably be more fitting if we let Gong Sun Zan do it. But yeah, it's gonna be 5,000 troops in our first battle. Let's fight. Zhou Long, one of the legendary five tiger generals of Shu Han, but we're playing as Gong Sun Zan. If we have our way, Shu Han will never exist. Zhao Yun will stay right by our side, right where we want him conquering the world together with our faction leader. Love and look of the game so far. It is a gorgeous one. I want to thank Creative Assembly yet again for allowing me an early look at Total War Three Kingdoms. Really looking forward to this battle. I think it should be an exciting one. And loving these banners. But as soon as we hit K, sorry guys, I'm going to have to campaign, continue campaigning against it because these generic ass green and red symbols, Attila-esque, in their design, Joe, and I'm not a fan. I really think that it would be so much better if we had the option to get faction-specific banners right here, because when I'm zoomed out, this is where I spend all my time. I don't want just a generic icon here. I want the full banner that we had in Warhammer 2, or Shogun 2, or Medieval 2, or any other Total War game besides Attila. It just does not look good. It does not please me aesthetically. I hope it changes at some point down the road, or at least we get mods for it, but mods will never be a replacement for what we can get from the devs themselves. So if they're willing to change unit cards, I urge them, I plead with them yet again for the 17th time, the umpteenth time, please give us faction banners so that I know what faction I'm playing so it's not generic and the same for every faction no matter what I play. Okay, with that out of the way, we've got 3,000 troops to kill. We've got our white horse fellows out on the right flank, bunch of cavalry ready to get in behind and run over some archers and infantry and these guys can get stuck in and do really good work in close quarters as well. Even better than the Lance Cavalry, actually. And so we're going to overload that flank and try to get our enemy, our hated nemesis, Liu Yu, out of position and sad. We're going to keep the archers in the front, doing some skirmishing with them. And I think Gong Sun Zan and Zhao Yun are going to have to do some archer killing this game. 
Are they coming in from behind? No. Oh, we got reinforcements as well. No, we don't. I don't know where that was coming from. I don't know what that is. It doesn't matter. All right, we don't have vision of the enemy quite yet. I think that instead of accepting any duels this game, I think their job is going to be to run down archers because in the melee, they will get like eight or 10 kills off of every charge and continue cycle charging by themselves. I mean, they will mulch infantry by themselves in romance mode. So we're gonna let them do their thing. We're not gonna accept a duel because it takes too much time. And instead, make sure that their archers who could do a lot of damage to us, won't be able to. Now take a look at that archer range. That's crazy. They have 200 range, but that 200 is longer than we've ever had in a Total War game before. And it's even longer, I think, on the White Horse Fellows. Yeah, 250. Holy crap. This green line is the edge of their firing arc. That's like, it feels like half a mile almost. Absolutely insane, but I like it. All right, so they have more archers than we do. But we might have local superiority, so I'm gonna see what we can do here. But first I need to get line of sight. I don't know why there's no map. I haven't been able to figure out how to turn off, turn on a, a global map that shows us what the deal is there. I'm sure there's a way to do it, but I didn't see it in the menus. So we'll have to go without it for now. And I think we're gonna make them their own control group. All right, keep moving up guys. Let's get some cinematics, hey? Oh, uh, those banners flowing in the wind. That is a glorious sight to behold. That is for sure. Very flavorful. Very pretty. All right, our cavalry moving out here. And we are starting to see enemy troops gathering at the edge of the woods. So those are some Mountain Saber Militia. Not very good. Let's see if we can get in range of them and shoot them to pieces. Maybe if we actually set up right at the edge of this clearing. He might be baited in, and then we can murder him. Watch out! Enemy lies in wait for us. Yeah, they do. All right. We're going to have to be careful about his archers. One of the things you'll notice, especially in the early game, all your stuff, very low armor, almost Shogun 2-esque. Very few shields, very low armor means archers are very deadly, especially when they focus fire. So have to be cautious about that. We went through the trees. Saber militia. Mm. Yeah, we can do a little bit of skirmishing. Got plenty of ammo, but firing into those woods isn't really gonna do a whole lot of damage. So let's actually move a little bit further out. A little bit more pressure on that flank. Okay. I want to bait him in. I don't know if he's gonna take that bait. Oh, here we go. He might be coming. All right. Shoot the G. And shoot the saber militia. I think they have shields though. Might be better to just shoot the G because they don't. All right, opening volleys. You're not getting flanked. Make sure nothing's coming in from behind. <laughs> that could be pretty disastrous when you start this game. All right. Now I gotta be careful about his archers. They are starting to get into range. Could maybe even get a little bit aggressive here and charge them. All right, he pulled back. Man, so smart. AI, so smart. Your best is not good enough. Oh, that's rude. I feel like I'm doing a pretty good job. Okay. So he is now firing in. We're going to pull back. Definitely pulled up too far there. Yeah, he's uh, using actually the the cover of the trees very nicely. And he hurt us there. So we're going to back up. You guys charge in. Oh, yeah. We can catch him out, I think. Any spear, any G we have to worry about. Oh, pull the archers back. Oh, here comes his calf. All right. Let's send both of them in. I think we can kill him. And get the G in as well. All right, over here. Oh, there's the ambush. Let's pull out. Pull our cavalry out of that fight. Set up over here. And let's charge our G in. And shoot the cavalry as well. Move up our infantry. Yeah, we're getting some good kills there for sure. Get in there, Saber Militia. You guys can shoot them. We lost some cav there. Not disastrous by any means. See if we can bait some of his army over onto that side. In the center here, let's kill him. All archers, focus fire on those. And let's get you in the trees. 
All right, need to get you out because you're in the G right now. You're in the halberds. You don't want to be there. We need to find a way to get our cavalry in up the center and into those archers because they have so many of them. It's really going to hurt. Rude. Shall I show you? All right, we're killing them good. Let's go. Let's get aggressive with these guys. The enemy unit flees. What cowards. I don't know why I can't use that yet. Are right, we gonna charge into the flank? See if we can write them quickly. And you guys need to pull back. All right, archers, come here. Oh, here comes the cow. All right, you guys go into melee. How many have you killed? Not enough, I think. Melt them. All right, we gotta kill the archers now. Come on, try harder. Okay, pull you guys back. Get you guys around the flank. Kill those Cav. Okay. You know what? I If we can kill his gen here, that'd be pretty good. Don't accept any duels, but we can kill him just normally. And that would be really nice. We're in a good position right now, I think. Nice. Okay, we routed him. Good. Starting to run out of ammo on our stuff. All right, kill him. Here comes the G. All right, now we can get our infantry in. All right, yeah, we're starting to run out. Okay, get the cavalry on the flank. You come here, charge those archers. Yeah, we're starting to hurt them. We gotta be careful around all those halberds. Let's pull through, let's pull through. A little bit blobbed up, I don't wanna be that blobbed up. All right, nice, 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 nice. Charge in there. I don't want to chase him into the halberds. He's actually doing a really good job of hiding back there. All right, I think we ignore him for now because he's really not that good. You guys come in. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Good stuff. We took a really good position in the trees. AI is actually playing this relatively well. It's kind of impressive. They've been relatively tactical about what we've done so far. All right, you kill one of these guys. You kill the other. And then I think... We might be able to finish up those archers as well. The enemy unit flees. Yeah, this is mass route time. Nice. Nice. All right, we just got to kill this infantry now. You guys fire into them from the flank. No, uh, you're out of ammo. We don't want you to charge in. All right, pull you guys back. All right, cavalry coming from behind. We're going to kill these strategists. You do not want to be there. What are you doing? And keep this cavalry making them move. Don't let them rally. Nice. Yes, it does. We are going to win this for sure. I don't think we've lost. Uh, we might have lost. No, we didn't. Didn't lose any units either. All right, now let's watch Zhao Yun when he gets into melee. Zulong, kill them all. Gong swims up. Look at that. He just charges in. Eight or nine dead every single time. Cycle charging all day long. That is fun to watch. You guys need to turn around. Kill him. That's a round off. Go, go, go. That's sick. Man, that had some impact to it, too. That looked good. Why does this guy have HP left? Do we need to duel you? Is that what we're gonna do? Are we just gonna duel you? Ready. Yeah, of course he doesn't want to duel. Tell them. He's gonna die all the same. Ready. I think he's the only guy left on the field. There he goes. Now that would be sick if they were saying Zhao there. If they're saying Zhao like Zhao Yun, that'd be really cool. I don't know if that's actually what they were saying. I'll take it. Good, good fight. That was really fun. Big battle. Not as many close-ups as I would have liked, but I mean, I had to make sure that I was on my ball on point there because they were playing relatively well. We took some losses, but overall, archers 
reaped a terrible tally on their lines, and we're going to be able to run them down too. White Horse Fellows. And they took more casualties there than I would typically like, but pretty good. Let's make sure these guys don't come back. Now, that was only one battle, but I've got to say, that was actually kind of impressive. The AI played that pretty well. They ambushed my cavalry. I didn't realize they had that many troops hidden. They managed to stay at the outskirts of the clearing in the middle and skirmish with me for a while. And it was only until it noticed that I was winning the skirmish fight that it said, okay, I have to commit my troops. And then it avoided the fight with Liu Yu for a while. Didn't duel Zhao Yun because he knew he was going to get his ass kicked. They handled that pretty well. We killed a full army, one that outnumbered us, but that was not too bad. So what we're going to do is replenish our troops because we want to make sure that we have as many as we can when we march on Yuzhu. With me. And it looks like he is going to escape, but not with too many men. China's problems need an eye and will. I agree with you. You are so right. You really activate my brain Press almonds. Onward. Okay, so we can't move any further this turn. Be unrelenting. That's okay. We're going to chill there for now and take a look at some other stuff. So in Yu Beiping, we are upgrading to a large town, which should give us some nice stuff, some more income, higher population, more prestige, all things you want. And over here in the trade port, we are working on a coastal trading jetty to get more income as well. So basic level economy buildings at the moment, nothing too fancy. What we can do is take a look at our building chain. And so you can see right here, military government is marked as yellow. And that is what is unique to his building chain. And there are some pretty big buffs you can get out of these bad boys when you level them up. Right here, we got the county inspection office. I mean, you get public order, you get prestige, which you need if you want to work your way up towards emperor. You get extra income from all the other buildings inside that province and economic boons as well some building construction buffs i mean when you work all the way up here then you're talking about the big daddies you got to have a very high level city with a big population but you lower corruption you increase prestige dramatically huge public order of plus 10 and i think it also helps with mustering or one of them does this one gives you a better rank for your cavalry when you recruit them and remember, this is using the Thrones of Britannia system for recruitment. So when you recruit troops, it is instantaneous in terms of mustering, but they come in with only about, say, 40% of the unit intact. The rest will come in over the next three or four turns. And you'll need to make sure they all move in there and allow you to get your full unit. And then you can move on and do some conquering. Loving the rotation of the day and night on the campaign map. I think it's really nice. Really nice touch. And also interesting, you guys, you guys might remember from the Liu Bei campaign, we cannot actually enter trade agreements with anyone at the moment. You actually need to unlock that first part in the technology tree before you get that. And there are a couple ways to get trade agreements going. The best way is through the tech tree itself, but there are other ways as well. So right here, take a look. We've got one food. So actually, I, I did lie. I think the northeastern part of China is not really known as a breadbasket. I think it's actually got kind of crappy fertility. So that might be one of the issues we run into. Um, but we haven't built many farm buildings yet that can be increased, of course. We do have two commanderies under our control. And in terms of our economy, it's doing all right. So, Gongsun Du, or Gongsun Du, is our... Eh, at this point, he's mostly our friend. I believe this is his cousin, or something like that. Dong Zhuo, of course, we are at war with him. As is everyone, and the Han Empire as well and Liu Yu, who hopefully will be able to kill very, very soon. So let's end the turn and see if we can finish him off. We might move in and garrison the settlement. And I am loving how fast end turn times are compared to mortal empires. That's real nice. Okay, he's gonna retreat to die. So what we're gonna do here... Oh, look at that. Gongsun Zhu, the son of Gongsun Zan. He's gonna be ready be used but we do not have enough in terms of economy to build a second army so not gonna worry about that yet we do have a couple generals who are not too happy with us yan gang first amongst them see i don't actually 
remember, this is my first campaign, so I'm still learning things as well as you guys, but he's pissed off at me because he has a general lack of purpose. Minus 20 malice there. Pretty big, but if you take a look at our assignments, we can only do one at the moment, and that's being taken by Tian Kai, who was a lot more useful in terms of what he could do for me. And if we take a look at our court, all these are locked. So I don't actually know how to use him in any capacity whatsoever. He might just be a court noble that ends up betraying me because I'm not giving him any jobs to do, but I don't know of any jobs I can give him because I can't give him any administration stuff and I can't make him any of these. So I don't actually know how that works. What we can do is if Zhao Yun continues to get a little bit pissy at us, right now he's at 42, so satisfaction's fine. But if it dipped, we could promote him and continue making him a happy boy. So if we take a look at his attributes, you can see that he desires a higher court position. Right now he has a minus 12 malice. If we promoted him and continue doing so, it does cost money, it does cost a salary, but in so doing, we will ensure his loyalty and we want to, because he is a bad ass. Super strong in melee combat and as I said, iconic. So, Wow, military supplies going down real quick. Only one turn in hostile territory went down to minus 40. But that will change as soon as we conquer this. We're going to delegate this one. Because I don't think that... Yeah, they don't have a garrison, really. And that will fall to our blades. Fix your mind and never wait. I agree. I definitely agree. So we will occupy this. This belongs to us now. We're not tyrants. We're not conquerors. We're not Dong Zhuo. We're not going to just burn Luo Yang to the ground when he leaves in a hurry. We are going to slowly conquer our way towards that part of the map. And if you take a look at the overarching campaign map, this is where we are. Northeastern corner, working our way towards Dong Zhuo. Now, I don't think we're going to be able to get there by turn 50 unless we just hop, skip, and jump all the way there. But I think that we would lose all of our supplies and it would just be a disaster. So there's no point in doing that. We're going to take it a little bit slower and uh, make sure we conquer things bit by bit. And keep the people happy. We are liberators, not conquerors. So I shouldn't say conquer because it leaves a bad impression, a bad taste in the mouths of the people. And they've had enough of that. They haven't had enough to eat. Famine all across China right now. What can we build here? Get, the stables ready for my horse. Get those stables ready. Get those white horse fellows ready. They're good, man. Good in melee, good from range. Pretty awesome. All right, what can we upgrade? We can upgrade the town itself. Could go for land surveying office. I'd like to get a little bit more money, though, before we start doing that. Fire burns brightly and indiscriminately. But no flame can last forever. Starved of air, it chokes, it splutters, and is then extinguished. The tyrant is dead. Yet in the ashen darkness, the avaricious prowl. Holy crap. Big Daddy Donger is dead. Before I even got to saw the poor guy. Now, I hope that doesn't happen in the final campaign. Remember, this is an early access build. I would like to see him establish himself and not get run over by turn 12 in every campaign. That'd be kind of boring. I think in some of them, I want to see him grow and thrive and become that true late game threat that he's kind of meant to be in some ways. I mean, look, we know that historically, he didn't make it very far. When he had all of China rise up against him, that was an issue. The coalition against Dong Zhuo ended up being successful. He got wrecked by Lu Bu and betrayed by everyone who he, he ever loved. But I think in this instance, it'd be cool if sometimes he manages to push them back and say, I'm the big daddy donger, come at me, bro, and become a late game threat. I think it'd be pretty sweet. All right, so he's dead. Wang Yun plotted the overthrow, and I wonder if Lu Bu will take over. Or if he'll go into the re global recruitment pool. That'd be pretty sick, too. 
Now, I don't know exactly how the global recruitment pool works quite yet. I think it might have something to do with proximity to your location. So if he's in southwestern China, I might not be able to pull him in. But if he was nearby, I might be able to see him appear in my character pool. Which I think shows up in court. Yeah, candidates. These are guys that I could call on right now. So Lubu might appear that if I see him in person. That could be maybe how that works if he's up for grabs. I'm not sure. I have so it is winter, but we are pretty much fully recruited and I don't want to wait any longer. Might just move on die right now. Do not yield. Take them. Yeah, we don't want to let him continue recruiting troops and mustering more stuff. So what we're going to do, we are going to split this into two parts. I only am allowed to show one hour. So what we're going to do is we are going to split this campaign playthrough into two parts. We've got an hour. We're at about 30 minutes, but I want to finish this war in part one. So we're going to fight it. And then after that, we're going to move into part two. And I might fast forward a little bit more so that we can get a deeper look into the campaign a little bit further on after we've defeated Liu Yu. But first, we have to defeat them. Let's go to the battle and fight a siege. All right, we're gonna skip most of the pleasantries here because we are running out of time. Only have an hour. Let's get into the battle and look at our deployment. This is not a siege. I don't care what you say. This is not a siege battle. I don't know what the game was telling us there because this is not a siege in any way, shape, or form. But it won't matter. Our opponents will die regardless. It is a cool looking map though. Pretty gorgeous. And you guys are gonna have to close in and kill some stuff. So archers in the front, and their job is fairly obvious. They are going to shoot things. You guys again are gonna be rolling together because that pimp squad is just unbeatable in melee. They did so much work for me last game. Gonna happen again. Gonna get our cab all the way around the flanks. Maybe bait out some archers, but are we in range yet? No, not quite yet. Move up, my archers. Move up. And you guys need to move up as well. Put you in your own control group. Cavalry. Oh, you're almost in range. We'll skirt by. Okay, here we go. Put in double fast forward for a second here. Oh, oops, my bad. All right, shoot him. And I think we're just gonna close straight into melee. Uh, no, we have range superiority. We can sit back, we can sit back. We'll sit back, just for a bit. Maybe do an epic charge with Zhao Yun. And cavalry, make sure you get all the way around the side. Oh, we are in range. Are they in range? Not yet. And that's cr the archery range in this game is so crazy. With four focus firing down them, I think we'll be able to win those fights relatively easily. Oh man, that's brutal. That is brutal. Let's put pressure on him. Let's go. Yes, dude. Cavalry wants to take that fight. I don't want to give it to him. I'm gonna pull back. No reason to. You cannot beat me. Yep, sure. Wow, that's really rude, and I'm gonna kill you for it. Yeah, baited him in, shredded him. Oh man. Focus fire in this game is so crazy. I think archers are gonna be a big part of this game. I mean, most of their stuff doesn't have shields. All right, they're coming in. Let's see if we can get some infantry out to support. Oh, it's brutal. It's brutal now. You guys go in. Yeah, if we get their support, I think we can just fight. Oh, it's a passive buff. That's crazy, he's so fast. Go in. Yeah, those G infantry, watch their numbers drop. They're 155, 152. Get in, get in, get in. All right, here we go. Big calf fight on the way. Keep shooting them, shoot the calf. All right. Let's see him go to work. Oh, arrow storm out here. Uh, 
We're gonna friendly fire on Star if we're not careful. Right. Shoot something else. That is so crazy. Holy crap, we just melted that stuff. Uh, if we get one volley into the back of them, I think we're gonna be good. Pull our cab out. And just watch them as they melt. Our archers OP. I guess that might be one of my biggest questions. Certainly gonna be OP against peasant militia. Look, the enemy run. Craven. All right. That is your game, pretty much. We're gonna run them down, and we're gonna be happy boys. All right, so we're gonna call it there. That's gonna be part one. Hope you join me for part two of this Gong Swin San campaign. And we'll also be allowed to do some streaming as well. But I will be gone for the weekend. So I won't be able to stream over the weekend. I'm looking to hopefully work something out with CA. Or they will let me stream sometime next week. I'll see if that is able to happen. Either way, we're going to be doing a part two of this. And I hope you guys can join me. Peace out.